I really cannot believe that this laptop is so cheap because it gives you enough power to play games on it, to work on it, to study on it. I would say it's almost perfect for this price. But this is not the only laptop in this video. I have a few more affordable laptops for the tasks I've mentioned above that are actually worth every single penny. Hey, what's up? My name is Arthur Weiner. And if you want to get a laptop for gaming, work and study at the same time, you should consider something in this price range from $600 to $1,000 because gaming is a pretty heavy task, especially new games that requires at least 8 gigs of RAM and a decent graphics card, not to mention the quality of the monitor and you probably don't want it to sound like a jet engine. Everything below this price range only good for very limited tasks like web browsing, working with text, but if you're into gaming, video editing, even photo editing and design, then something around $600-ish will be your entry-level machine. But let's get more specific and move to the first and probably the best budget laptop, in my opinion, for gaming, work and study. And you can also get more specific by smashing the like button and in the next shot, Baby Groot will appear. See? So easy. And it's the Acer Swift 3. It's very compact and lightweight, you can easily travel with it. And check this out, we have a fingerprint reader. It's pretty comfortable to type, the keyboard has the LED lighting built in, and the touchpad is pretty responsive. Don't expect much from a laptop in this price range, but here we still have the two USB Type-A ports, HDMI, audio jack, and the USB Type-C for transferring files, you can connect a monitor and fast charge your laptop, all thanks to this port. The display the display of the Swift 3 is color accurate enough, it's pretty comfortable for eyes to look at, unlike many other cheap laptops. Yes, it's not the best choice if you work with colors a lot, like professional color correction or design, but it's enough for gaming and simple video and photo editing. It's the 14-inch Full HD IPS display and the screen bezels are pretty thin. It's powered with the AMD Ryzen 5 5500, 8 gigs of RAM, NVMe M2 SSD, and I'm very confident to say that it will easily handle Photoshop light 4K video editing. And I say light because we exclude heavy codecs like ProRes that professionals use, as well as graphics heavy plugins. But if you have like 8-bit MP4 H.264 footage from a budget camera, this laptop will handle it easily. You can play almost any game on this laptop, but on low and medium settings. However, you know, if work and study is what you do most of the time, then playing games even on this settings will make you feel satisfied and will pass the time. But what I really like about the Swift 3 is its power efficiency. It's not hidden like crazy and you can literally work and study on it almost all day long. Acer stated that you can work 13 hours on a single charge and it's almost true for simple everyday tasks. Of course, while gaming and multitasking, you can easily divide this number by two or three, but still impressive for a laptop like this. I mean, this is what I'm buying a laptop for. I want to travel with it without thinking about the charge all the time. So it's a very good entry-level device that I strongly recommend for those who want to save money and get a universal solution. It's compact, comfortable to use, you can work with text, videos and photos, you can study, you can play games. Pay very close attention to the Acer Swift 3 because it's just so nice. Another good laptop for work and study is the Lenovo IdeaPad 3, made of plastic and let's run through the ports real quick. It has three USB type A's, HDMI, the card slot and the audio jack. The speakers are located down here, which is not always great because if you want to place it on your legs or bed, you will barely hear the sound. But if you're okay with using headphones, then it might be not a problem at all. The keyboard is sturdy. I like how it feels for the price. The TN 1080p display with matte surface and you can get the 14, 15.6 or 17 inch model. It's obvious that we get very limited viewing angles with this display. It's pretty hard to use outside, which is a big downside for me personally, because I work with video a lot and it's unacceptable to do professional color correction on this monitor. But if working with videos and stills is not the main thing for you, it might be not that big of a deal. You can get this model in three different configurations you can see on the screen, but let's focus more on the last AMD version. Gaming on this laptop is more like a nice bonus. You can play on it, but new games will run more on low settings and sometimes on medium, 
For example, you can play GTA 5 on low settings and you cannot play the latest Witcher on it. IdeaPad 3 is not that power efficient as the Swift 3 and it shows you best results only when connected to power. On a single charge, this laptop will last you about 5 to 6 hours, working with text you can get a bit more. It has 8 gigs of RAM, 1 M2 SSD, but you can install HDD inside if you want to expand the storage. So not that universal as the Swift 3, but still a good budget option for work and study and some gaming. The next one is way more gaming friendly and it's the Acer Aspire 7. A bit more pricey, about $800, but it's amazing what you get for it. This is the AMD version as well, Ryzen 7 5700 and 4 gigs NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1650. And this is so enough for many games in 2022, not to mention work and study. And of course, this is not the only configuration of this laptop, you can get it cheaper and more expensive. However, I recommend getting the AMD version at least because it's cheaper and you get almost the same performance for less money. On top of that, Ryzen is very power efficient and will work great on battery power, so you can work and study without needing it to keep it plugged in. And talking about remote work, here we have the 15.6 Full HD IPS display with matte surface, which is always nice to have, especially if you work or study outside a lot. It's important to note that Aspire 7 is not so compact as the previous two, but we have many different ports and it's more powerful, so not that big of a deal for me. Also, this machine has a great cooling system and you can play any game on it with medium and high settings. It might get pretty complicated while picking an AMD Ryzen model, so here's a quick guide if you're not sure which Ryzen you should get. If you need a laptop for something very basic like web browsing, working with text, watching movies, then A-series is more than enough. If you want to edit basic photos and videos, play online games, then Athlon is what you need. Ryzen 3 is like a transition point, but Ryzen 7 and 9 is where you can make 3D renders, play heavy games, edit 4K videos, and so on. So Acer Aspire 7 is more focused on gaming, but if you're okay with this bulky design, then it's probably the best choice for you because you will complete even graphics heavy tasks on it. But if you want to get a MacBook, then I definitely recommend the M1 MacBook Air. Yes, it's pretty hard to play many popular games on it, but if it's not the main thing for you and your main apps are available on the Mac and you like this operating system, then it will be the best option for work and study. Yes, it's not the cheapest option on the market, but it has a great price to quality to performance ratio. It has this tapered design, the bottom side of the laptop is like angling down, which is great if you type a lot. Another upside is the battery life. You can easily work and study almost all day long on a full battery, and there is no need to use the power adapter to max out the performance. I recommend getting the base model upgrading just the SSD if you need to. Believe me, the base model is more than enough for most of you. Just watch this video where I prove that. And be sure to subscribe because pretty soon I'm making the review of the M1 Air, my one year experience with this laptop. So if you're buying budget is limited and you're looking for something compact, inexpensive and powerful at the same time, then go with the M1 Air. It's thin, lightweight, really this laptop is so great that I'm gonna make even more videos about it. The next laptop on the list is more like a bonus because it's pricey, but I decided to include it because it's great not only for gaming, work and study, but also for creativity. Asus ZenBook Duo 14 and Pro Duo 15 is a great laptop for creators because we have the second display and you can get up to 10th generation Intel Core i9 that has 8 cores and max boost clock speed of 5.3 GHz. Also the Nvidia GeForce RTX 3070, 32 gigs of RAM and 1 terabyte SSD. Now there are different configurations where the cheapest one is $1299 and the maxed out model is $3340. For work and study I recommend getting the base model with the Full HD display, but if you want to play heavy games and edit heavy videos, then the 15-inch model with 4K OLED is a better option. The color accuracy is great
grades, so if you plan to make professional color grades, then it's a great choice. And the second ScreenPad Plus display gives this laptop a unique look and feel, and it's great for designers, illustrators, video editors, and VFX artists. Having a second display right under your fingertips is so useful in almost any creative process. ZenBook Duo is lightweight and has a very durable design. It feels really solid. Yes, getting the fully loaded model might get pretty expensive, but the base ZenBook Duo 14 is more affordable and still enough for 1080 and 4K edits. So on the downsides, the price, there is no SD card slot and not too many ports available. But the rest is so great and I decided to show it to you as a bonus on this list. Well, now you know how to pick a laptop for gaming, work and study and always feel free to click on one of the videos you see here because they're also very helpful. Trust me. And see you guys next time.